JR. And today we're going to start off with our holidays for the week. Uh, starting off today, we have and National... don't pay no mind to me. I have to lean in because my eyes are bad. <laughs> uh, today we have National Smoke and Mirrors Day, National Lemon Chiffon Cake Day, National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day, National Nevada Day for those of you out in Nevada, uh, and National Vietnam War Veterans Day. And Tuesday is National Take a Walk in the Park Day. That's easy for us because the park is our backyard. <laughs> National Doctors Day, National Pencil Day, National Turkey Neck Soup Day, and National Virtual Vacation Day. Well, I can say in the past year, a lot of people have been doing virtual vacations. Definitely. So. <laughs> On Wednesday, the 31st, we have World Tobacco Day, National Bunsen Burner Day, National Clams on the Half Shell Day, National Crayon Day, National Prom Day, National Tater Day, National Little Red Wagon Day, and Manatee, National Manatee Appreciation Day. Little Red Wagon Day, I grew up in a town that had a store, it's still there. Yeah, it's called the Red Wagon. Red, yeah. And Thursday, April 1st, of course, is April Fool's Day, Atheist Day, International Fun at Work Day, International Tattooing Day. Tattoo, I don't, I don't know tattoos. if they mean that well. Who knows? It means getting tattooed. Day. National Burrito Day. National One Cent Day. National Sourdough Bread Day. National Burrito Day. And Take Down Tobacco Day of Action. Hmm, interesting. Right. And we've both quit smoking in the past few months. So definitely are taking down well, tobacco. I was talking about Burrito Day. You have it twice. Oh, I do. I didn't mean to do that. On Friday, April 2nd, is National Children's Book Day, National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, National Walk to Work Day, National Ferret Day, National Reconciliation Day, World Autism Awareness Day, and it's also Good Friday to most religious people. <laughs> And let's see, Saturday, April 3rd is National Don't Go to Work Unless It's Fun Day, National Chocolate Moose Day, National Film Score Day, Find, National Find a Rainbow Day, National Tweed Day, which I don't know what that's all about, <laughs> World Party Day, National Love Our Children Day, and National Handmade Day. We should love our children every day. We shouldn't have to do it one day a year. Right. And then on Sunday, April 4th, we have World Rat Day, National Chicken Corn on Blue Day, National Hug a News Person Day, National Jeep 4x4 Day, National School Librarian Day, National Vitamin C Day, National Walk Around Things Day, National Geologist Day, and it's also Easter Sunday. And that's the national that's the national and world holiday. Unrecognizable. Right. Except for April Fools and... And Easter, right. And Those are just the know. days that we found for... And I'm sure school. there's a lot more unincorporated days oh, that people sure. celebrate <laughs> on those days that so. we don't have time to right. This find. Is, that's on just, I think, two websites that I found that I take from that I get the days. But there are numerous websites out there that have different days of the week and different holidays for different days. So... That's it for the days of the week. Today's subject is about words and how words matter to situations and how you react to things, uh, basically, in my opinion and things I've read. You know, words play a big part because it happens to us a lot. Right. Uh, how people interpret the words that you say. Because a lot of times when people talk, they don't always... The, the way that they print, they, they, they say something is not always the way that it's they mean it. interpreted. Or the way they mean it. Right. Because I do that a lot. And right. I'm guilty of saying things coming out the wrong way and right. people not... And it happens a lot, especially in politics, which we have seen numerous times over the past few years. Uh, I would say over the past 50 years, yeah. it, it plays out a lot in politics. Right, you know, in the news, in all different types of media, words are construed de depending on how other people interpret those words. And interpretation is 
a lot of where misunderstandings happen, especially with us when we talk about things, you know, and that's something I've tried, not always, not always good at, but I try to think of the right words to use. You know, uh, Marcus, my our son, is very thoughtful of the words that he uses. He'll take ninety five percent of the time. There's a few times that he doesn't do it. Right. But it depends on if he's ranting about something. Right. If he but, gets on what, what what they call the perverse proverbial um, soapbox. soapbox, he doesn't have that slow down to right. to use the right words. He tries to. I give him that. Yeah. But yeah, there's a few times time, that he don't. There's a lot of times, especially when he's talking to someone who doesn't know him, it'll take him two or three minutes to get a sentence out because he he thinks very carefully about the words that he uses. See, I don't. I, I've always, I, I've <laughs> never, I, I've never been like that. I just, I, I say how I, I, I say. I try to. But and you interpret it how you want. And if you think I'm being rude, tell me. Or say, hey, you know, did you mean something different? Because I have a bad habit of, especially with you, because we go through this a lot. I say right. things and you don't even, you don't even, you misinterpret what I, what right. my meaning is. Right, you I know, do. and especially like I, last I, night. I know. For I example, know. we were talking about fitness, and you automatically the thought, or uh, well, yeah, <laughs> you automatically think that I'm trying to get you to go into the gym and push like I'm pushing, and that's not my agenda. Right. My agenda is just to help you learn new, different ways to do exercises, and you know, right. you you took it the wrong way, and I I don't know, I just. It happens a lot, though. I it, mean, it, it, not just with us, though. I mean, it happens in society because different people have different types of vocabulary depending on where they grew up. Um, growing up in the country, in country area, versus growing up in the city, growing up in suburbs, your your vocabulary really is different, and depending on where you grew up, the the kind of dialect that you had in your home and in your neighborhood can can change the way that people interpret what the things that you say and it, it changes the dynamic and you can be misunderstood very easily um it goes back to my video that i posted the other day about assumptions right you know those shirts i have that have different sayings on them right people see a person that wears a shirt and they read the saying and they automatically assume that's how they feel Maybe they just wore the shirt because they like it. Usually I try. I'm I've got a shirt that says, not today, Satan. Right. Some people might automatically think that I'm religious because I have a shirt that says that. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, words play a lot in, in society, period. I mean, how you say things really does. I really words wish, matter. Yeah. I, I really want a shirt that says, if you can read this, you're too close. But they, We saw them at Walmart and you just never grabbed one. I know. But, I mean... There, there's a lot of ways that people misinterpret things, I, and I think. but I mean, it, 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 it is the society that we live in today, and depending on what what area of the country you're from, the way you say things is different. Uh, people who speak English from England speak differently than we speak here in the U.S. So words can be. Yeah, I think we touched that in one of our other videos. Right. About, no, I don't know if we did. About the word faggot for a cigarette. No, we haven't talked about that before. You know, the, in, in, in Europe, when they say the word faggot, they mean a cigarette. Over here, if you said that to somebody, it's, it's a totally derog different right, it's meaning. It's a derogatory term for a gay person. But it's it's not different right. words like okay we 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 call hot dogs hot dogs on the other side of the world they it's call sausage. them sausage or they call them uh whatever they call them you know there's different terms right. so Co the 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 term cookies and biscuits are completely different here as they are in the uk and in right. great britain because a cookie to them is or a biscuit to them is what we consider a cookie right you know, or some it, some version of it, right? I mean, that that yeah. word for bathroom is loo or something like that yeah. versus you know laboratory or something, right? And I mean it, and a lot of a lot of 
a lot of misunderstandings that happen all around the world is because of translation errors or because of um, words that are used differently in different places. So just a small bit of public service announcement to <laughs> that I'm going to give. It's a small bit of advice. If you go visit other countries, do a little research on their words and what they mean before right. you go over there because that's the that'll make the difference on how your experience is going to be in that in that country or that small country se right. setting because it'll 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 change your experience because if you go over there without knowing nothing right you might have a bad experience and be like, oh i'm never traveling there again right no my my ex my ex-wife's dad he lives in thailand he retired and he moved to Thailand. And before he moved, his his brother already lived over there, so he kind of had a leg up on things. But before he moved, he was learning the language. He was practicing the language, the cultures. He was learning everything because he knew that was where his permanent residence was going to be. So when you go visit anywhere, just a PSA, just due diligence, learn a little bit about the culture and the right. words. So that way... You don't get in trouble. Right. And, and I mean, different cultures have different things that we would think is rude is how other people are on a daily basis. Or um, I, I watch, I actually watch a lot of YouTubers that are from England and Great Britain. And I have seen that, you know, um, in England, they have switches on their plugs. They can turn their plugs on and off. Like your electrical plugs, they can turn them on and off. Whereas to us, that's completely strange because we don't have well, that. Well, that depends. You know? um, that and depends. Because in the bathroom here, we have a. Uh, yeah, but it's still not that's an on a power off switch. switch. Well, right. I know. I, I don't know. I have to. See, you have to show me later what you're talking about. And then you know, there's there's a lot of things that culture wise and uh, and just all different things. And even though our cultures in England and here are similar they're still different as well um one youtuber that i watch his name is uh lawrence brown he originally he's originally from england and he got married and his wife is american and when he moved here he actually his whole youtube channel is about the differences between the u.s and the uk and I mean, he, he's made his whole channel about that because there really is a lot of differences. And even though our cult, you know, the U.S. culture kind of came from the English culture, it's morphed, it's changed a lot. Well, and that, that's, that's a whole nother issue because you're saying our U.S. culture came from England. It, it originally, I mean, the original that colonists. That depends on which part of the country you're talking about. You, well. Because if you look at the South. The South was in was was um, the Southern like mostly Louisiana was influenced from Haiti, yeah. and and no, not originally Haitian culture. O originally, it was French and Spanish, and then Haitians came. But originally, it was French and Spanish that uh, that owned Louisiana and that but owned New if Orleans. If you do, if you do and then all the, the United States, and... uh, as far as like culture wise, influence wise, there's no one set. Where it, it is now. Right. But, but what, then, I, what I mean is the those who formed our society and our government and the way that we do things originally came from England. Now mm -hmm. it has it has blended over many over the few centuries of the US. It has blended from all over the all over the globe, but originally they came from England. Well, back to what I was saying about words. For instance, you know, you get pulled over by a cop. How you react to him and how he, re how your words say to him and his words to say to you and the tone of your words and the tone of your voice, all of that plays a factor into the situation. Right. Now, I'm not saying, you know, it, it all depends on how they react, too, because, right. you know... It, it, and it's a sticky situation when it comes to police. Uh, I... I've been watching over the past year everything that's happened with the police, the defund the police movement. I don't think we should get away, get oh, rid of police. I, I don't. But I do think that training for the police department needs to change. Right. Um, here, I mean, I grew up around a lot of police officers. Some were good, some were bad. Um, but my neighborhood 
If you were walking down the street and a police officer didn't like you, they would stick you in a car just because. Police didn't like me, period. <laughs> I, I but, really I really know this. Police didn't like me. I know. Now, I'm white. I know. And police didn't like me. You know why? Because I didn't fall in line with them. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up in a neighborhood till I was 17 years old before my grandmother died. And it was all predominantly white. But I didn't feel like I belonged. Right. Because I grew up poor, but I was never uh, I was never looked at as one of the in crowds by the people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, they had a few in the neighborhood that, you know, the few families, you know, like my next door neighbor that was a preacher. He never judged nobody. He was a cool guy. I had a few people in the neighborhood that didn't really care where you were from. Right. But when I moved from there, we moved to, I moved to a neighborhood that was all black. Right. So being the only, there was only like two, three, maybe four families on that whole street right. that was white. It was predominantly black. My neighborhood was mixed. So I got looked at as part of that community right. no matter what. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter. I could have been, I could have lived on that block and had the nicest cars and the nicest clothes. Right. I would still have got looked at as part of that society because I lived there. Right. So mm -hmm. I know words matter because I have been stopped by cops before. Right. I, I will never forget. Uh, my neighborhood was mixed and um, my brother and his best friend were walking down the street. And it just so happened that when they were passing a yard... And in the yard, the people in the backyard were actually smoking pot. As my brother and them passed, a police officer passed with their windows down and they smelled pot. So they, my brother was only 12 or 13 at the time. And because my brother was walking down the street, there was a pot smell that the, the police officer smelled. They automatically put my brother and his best friend in a police car and were going to charge them with smoking marijuana. They had no marijuana on them. They... They, their clothes, their, they did not smell like marijuana because it was coming from the yard that they were passing. But it was that that was a common occurrence. And, you know, uh, yes, we had bad elements in our in our neighborhood. We had good and bad. A lot of bad, though. That, <laughs> a lot of bad. Well, that reminds me of what happened to me. I was standing, the way our apartment was, there was a front door and a back door. Mm -hmm. And the front door, I was standing outside. I was maybe like five feet from my door talking to a neighbor. He he had got, uh, it was like three or four doors down. They were playing cards and he couldn't take the cigarette smoke. So he had to step out because they were playing cards and he had to take a breather because everybody was smoking cigarettes. And so he had to step outside and he saw me. So he walked a few doors down and we're talking and this is like 11 o'clock at night. And all of a sudden, six cops come running across the street telling, you know, like, and he runs. I I stepped back a few feet. They didn't care that I lived five feet from that sidewalk. Like, from that side, from that, where I was standing to that door, I was five feet from my house. They did not care. Right. They arrested me anyway. Right. They didn't care. So, yes, I may not understand fully what it's like to be harassed by police, but I understand a little bit. I avoid the police like the plague, so right. maybe that's of, why, because right. I don't like to put myself and, in a situation to get in. A lot of my experience with, with a lot of police officers, I've always felt that the police officers I've had come into contact with have felt they were above the law. And if you didn't do what they said, you were going to be arrested or you, you were going to have consequences if, you know, no matter what you were doing, if you didn't do what they told you to do, you were going to be arrested or you were going to be in trouble, even if you weren't doing anything. You know, and that is how I've always been made to feel around police officers, even though I've known a lot of good police officers you know one of my friends in high school her father was a police he still is a police officer you know but it was still the majority of police officers I've been around I felt that they abused the power that they had that, that brings me to another subject go ahead keep you on. know that they felt you know and it wasn't and I I, I guess it was because of the area that I grew up in it wasn't it wasn't a horrible you know, horrible, horrible neighborhood. There was crime, there was a lot of crime, and but it wasn't a great neighborhood either, you know? And every interaction I ever had with police, I was always made to feel like they could, you know, they could arrest me or they could do whatever they wanted to me because they were a police officer. And well, that brings me to a point too, a lot of people don't talk about either, is not all police officers are known outside of the uniform right like some of them they, they keep their life separate like they don't boast to people that don't know them that they're a police officer right. now maybe they're close family and friends or people that know them for years or no mm. but what i mean by that is if i had i 
Let's, I'm going to hypothetically right. put a scenario. Yeah. If I get into a small argument with a person, mm. and I don't know that they are a police officer, right. they don't tell me that they're a police officer, mm. but I make them angry, mm. but yet they don't say nothing. They, de they de-escalate the situation, mm. and we squash it. But say he goes in to duty mm -hmm. and he happens to see me he remembers me from an argument we had two days ago and he's in his uniform right so he decides to harass me right. i don't recognize him because mm -hmm. i forget it's done and over you know right. whatever argument spat we squashed it it's over right i forget about it me i don't have that great of a recall so i might not remember the guy right uh, well maybe two days later i might remember but if it's a month later i might not remember having a, a disagreement with this guy that happens a lot too Right. You know, people get in these arguments with everyday people. They don't know they're cops. And then two months later, they run into each other again. And he happens to be in uniform. And this guy or girl don't remember having an argument with them. But yet they see a situation where they, you know, oh, well, we had an argument. Now I'm in uniform. I'm really going to harass them. Mm -hmm. it, it happens. People right. don't realize that either. Because right. people do hold grudges. Right. I mean, we're human. Nobody... Nobody, well, I'm not going to say nobody, but some, most people won't admit that they hold grudges. Right. I try not to. Mm -hmm. I try not to. I mean, there are times that I do. I, I totally admit that I, I will to some people, not to family members or people who I deal with on a daily basis. I don't, but there are people in my life, well, people who used to be in my life who I definitely hold gr uh, grudges against for things they did to me over years. But as far as, but they're not in my life anymore and I don't want them in my life. Yeah, yeah. I have a few people that I <laughs> I can care less for. I wouldn't piss on them if they was on fire. Yeah, right. I hate to say it, but that's just the way I feel. Right. I'm not a cruel human, but they were cruel what they done to me. Right. But like, you know, like I was saying, words matter. Um, words can make or break somebody's dreams, crush their goals. Right. But the, the, the thing is to try not to let the ugliness right. hamper you or, or bring you down. I know it's hard. It is possible. It's not impossible to move past hate right. or to fix hate or to fix words or to change the outcome. Right. But I really think that more people, and not just police, I, I think more people in general need to learn... To de-escalate. What is it Rachel Maddow said in one of her commercials? Watch what they do, no. not what they say. Right. You know. Right. And, and I mean, I really think that all people, and, and not just police, police definitely do because police are armed and police are looked up to by some people. And But I think all people should learn to de-escalate situations, not to let fear or anger rule them in a situation and to try to de-escalate a situation instead of trying to buck up and try to be tough and get as much as i would love to see that i know it, it's not likely but in our society and with all the issues that are going on today it would help things and, and police definitely i i think police should be the first group to try to to try and sort that. Remember, we saw this the the situation where um, a police officer came and the guy was having a bad day and he was angry and the police officer sat down with right, him. Right, yeah, and he ago, right yeah, and he de-escalated de the situation and he, he talked, talked to him. Mm -hmm. It took him hours, know? but he talked right. the guy down and right and nobody got hurt. Nobody got you know he de-escalated the situation and it was a good outcome. That doesn't happen very often. You know that that is a once in a or if, million. Or if it does, it doesn't get talked about. Right, and, and that's people, something. I mean, especially with all the anger and all the hate wants that's to going talk on. About stuff. That's the main reason of our channel is right. to try to spotlight and highlight the good deeds that that people don't talk about. Right, and and I mean, it's just I I really think with all the hate and anger that's going on right now and. So many people have the uh, quarantine fatigue and they're so tired of being home and they want to go out and do things and they, they, they're tired of all of this, you know, confinement and they're so angry and they want to blame somebody and there's no one to blame. I mean, not that we know, you know, yes, it came from China, but the Chinese people that are here in this country aren't the reason that the everybody has gotten sick. They, they're not, the people who have lived, Asian people who have lived here their whole life, they they, they have no nothing to do with 
th this virus, you know, and the hate that the 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 Asian community is receiving right now, it is misplaced, and, and it's just that hate is going on, and then we have all this other hate and all these shootings that are going on, and it's like we need as a as a country as as people as humans we need to find ways to de-escalate ourselves you know to try and calm ourselves as much down. as we can because right. we'll never see when i was growing up i used to see you know i used to see so many snippets from these beauty pageants and these women and i want I, 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 no 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 <laughs> i'm talking about when they come to the questions what would you like to see oh i would like to see world, world peace. peace right that's never gonna. That has happen. never, <laughs> ever, 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 ever happened. My I don't. Is right there. I don't care what people say. You'll never have a hundred percent world peace. I know. Now you might get close, right? But you'll never have a day in this world where nothing bad has happened. Right. It's just inevitable. We're humans. Right. But the thing is, you got to try to be the best version of yourself. Right. I admit. I am not the nicest person in the world. I know. I admit I am not the funnest person in the world. I have my faults. I, I hate this. But sometimes people get on my nerves. But mm. I try my best to not engage because I know myself. Right. I know what I am capable of. And it scares me to, to, to get in an argument because I'm afraid I might hurt somebody real bad. Right. And not think twice about it. So my best scenario is to just walk away. Right. Because I I'm more afraid of what I'm capable of versus uh versus of what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. Because I know myself and I know if I get too angry, right. I kind of like the Hulk. I don't get green, but I black out and right. and I just I get this fog and it's like I stop and it's like oh wait I just beat that person to a bloody right. pulp and it's like why did I do that? And, and I mean. And I, I, I know I have issues with fear. I, I do. Um, I have debil debilitating fear. Uh, I'm on the verge of agoraphobia. I don't like to leave the house. And I have these fears. Even though I know in my logical brain, I don't have anything to fear aside from a gun. Because I've been taught by Navy SEALs to defend myself. I, I took self-defense courses. Like weak self, like a week at a time self-defense courses with navy seals to be able to defend myself and to be able to take care of myself but those mean? fears i know but those fears are still there i i, I can't get the well, you're i know not scared they're of me. <laughs> see you're not scared of me i know that and there i know that it's irrational you know i have a therapist that i talk to every other week and i talk about this all the time because my logical brain says that the fears that I have are irrational there's no need for them but they're still there and I can't and it's not something that goes away you know well, it when, dumbfounds me because you see me at my angriest not at you but just in general but I'm not but, afraid of you but no matter how mad I get at anything you you you're not right. afraid of me but right. but if, but if somebody you don't know was throwing a fit not towards you but if you was in somebody I would be absolutely right, like for in instance, fear. Say, say we yeah. were outside, just sit, that, say we were just sitting outside in our right. in our front yard, or like on the back of our car with the hatchback open, just you know, just enjoying the weather, right. or sitting in our chairs in the front yard, right. and somebody across the street was yelling at his wife or girlfriend or having an argument, I would have a you would be scared yeah. because of that person, and I think I figured it out just now. I think it just clicked in my head. It's because you don't know that person. Possibly, that, and, yeah. and you don't know how they're going to react. You don't know if they're going to pull out a gun or something, start shooting or go on rampage and right. start beating up everybody. With me, you know 99.9% .9 chance that I'm not going to take my anger out on you and start beating you. That's probably why you're not afraid of me because you know I'm not right. that type of person. But you also but those know... those are strangers. Right. But you also know that I've been in, real, in uh, one relationship in particular that I completely trusted that person and I never thought they would do anything and then they beat me to a pulp right. and put me in the hospital. You know, so I don't I've, know if I've ever been you know, in a situation. I mean, yeah, I've been slapped before. I mean, I've threatened to hit a female, but I don't think I've ever fit, fell through with it. Right. Because and, and, I feel the threat is more than the actual right. physical part because I'd rather them... But then you also know what I've been through and we've talked about it 
extensively. But I also and, know you're not afraid to take something up and protect yourself either. So, you know, I mean, right. no matter what it is. I mean, if I was to ever lay my hands on you, you wouldn't be afraid to, to, to fight me back or pick up something and hit me with it. Right. You know, because you know... That I prefer. I used to pick up ironing boards and hit my brother with. Because as much as I, <laughs> as much as I told you, you know, I prefer you if I ever get out of hand. Right, and no I matter knew, how scared you and, are, and fight like back, said, knock right. me the fuck out. I mean, and, and like I put said, me in my place. I've trained with Navy SEALs to to learn self defense, to be able to defend myself if if it came down to it, but. I still have that irrational fear of the outside world. You, to me, are not in the outside world. You're in my world, I guess. Now, the outside world, to me, is what it makes me afraid. The outside world, I guess it's the unknown. You know, I watch and the news and there's shootings almost every day. That's probably why You know, I the, the world is crazy. And pe any people, and, and I've tried to, you know, I've told my, talked to my therapist about it, you know. To, you know, I know that a lot of my fears are irrational, but they're not completely irrational because the world is crazy. There are shootings happening every single day. And they're I not have televised. To force myself to go out and go shopping. Right. They're not always televised. Atlanta was televised and Boulder was televised, but there have been a shoot. There has been mass shootings, which is I think four they said or more been people 20 shot. This so far this year since right. January that a that, mass shooting is is considered uh, four or more people that are shot at one time And there was almost another one. one. Right. If it wasn't and for that Instacart Every single guy, day this month, every single day this month, there has been a mass shooting somewhere in this country. I don't think every single country. day. Yeah, according to the, the news report we watched this morning, and, oh, ever since uh, at the Atlanta shooting, there's been a day. There, every day there's been a shooting. I had to look that up. But that guy, you know, that, there like, was almost another one in Atlanta, but thankfully the Instacart guy was in the bathroom and he heard the guy what sounded right, and like he reported and, he, it, and reported right. it so they was able to get him right and, and i mean it happens every day so they stopped another one my irrational fear is not so irrational when you actually look at the things that happen in this country kids going missing because some crazy person has grabbed a kid because they want to abuse or kill a kid it's like when people you know? ask me what is my fear when i sit at restaurants when i do go out to eat why do i sit with my back to where i can see everything it goes back to when I was a teenager when uh, somebody I knew, I wasn't great friends with him, but I knew him. He was just somebody I knew. Mm -hmm. it, it, he His back was facing a window at, the, at a Taco Bell and somebody shot him. And if it wasn't for somebody that was sitting with him mm -hmm. to warn him that somebody was about to shoot him and he turned around, he was he got shot in the stomach instead of the back. Right. He, would, he probably wouldn't be alive today. Right. So ever since then, I don't. And, and I don't sit with my when I sit at a restaurant I gotta be in a spot where I can see everything right and people's like oh you that's just crazy you're paranoid no things There's, happen right the, even mean, if it's a one point a zero point one percent chance of something happening it's still it a still chance it still can happen right and, it, and it's in and my it, brain the thing is that it has happened and we know that it has happened is why we have these fears and this world like I said I know I've been called crazy, and I admit I have bipolar disorder. I am legally considered crazy. I, I know this. This whole world is crazy right now. The the things that have happened in this world and the things that are going on in the world, it's crazy. And I think I'm normal to feel the fear of something happening. I, I do. I mean, I know my therapist keeps telling me that I'm not, and these things are very rare, but it's not rare. We watch the news. We watch the evening, morning news, and evening news every day, and these things happen on a daily basis. Especially, we live in New Orleans. Crime is on the rise in New Orleans. Well, we Shooting is on. on the we live on the outskirts, but city. it's still but there. Crime is on the rise. Shootings are on the rise. Murders are on the rise in New Orleans. And carjackings. Right, and, and it, it it happens and. I don't think that I am that far off in being afraid of these things. No, I shouldn't let it completely control my life, but that's also hard because of the things that I've been through in my life. I don't want these things happening to me or my family, and I, I would rather stay home and stay away from people. So. It doesn't stop us from, like, if we wanted to just go go for a ride and right. you know and go ride around and go sit at a boat launch or something things like that doesn't stop us because there's not many people out there we can social distance even before the pandemic we right. can stay away from people we don't have to interact with people going to a park you know right. we can just enjoy the day 
We but, social distance before it was cool to do. Before right. it was a pandemic. But when it's go when it's time to go to a store or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I think we're gonna wrap that up. Right. Uh so like, subscribe, share, and comment. Ask questions, comment. Right. Um don't be afraid to, you know, to, to tell ask questions. You tell us what you think. We if don't, you don't judge. like something don't that like we something. talked about, let us know. Yeah. If you don't agree with the things that we talk about, please let us know. You know, tell us that we're wrong or we're way off. And, and let us know that you don't agree with us. We're fine with that. And enjoy your life one day at a time to the best of your abilities. Because you're not promised tomorrow. Right. And... Your loved ones are not promised tomorrow, so enjoy each and every day you have with your friends and family, with your pets, whatever it is you enjoy right. in a day-to-day -day basis if you enjoy playing video games. Just enjoy the moment right. as best you can. Yes, plan for some future, but most of the time, 90% of the time, enjoy your day as it happens. Don't... I'm trying to learn that. I've been trying to learn a lot, let things control my emotions that I can't control. Right. So... so like and subscribe and i will be back on wednesday talking about uh different things that on wednesday i have on my channel i have a video going up for keto cloud bread on thursday and then he will be back on friday, on friday. with what subject i have no <laughs> clue yet whatsoever but it will be something right. worthwhile so we will be back next week together and oh you and have an our dog is not in the video today. He decided to, to, he stay, decided under the to bed. stay under the bed today. So, so that's why Sparrow's not in the video. So just in case anybody asks where Sparrow, because Mickey, I know you're going to see this and you're going to ask where the dog's at. He's hiding from us today. There's your answer. <laughs> so you have a nice week and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.